Okay, Nicola going into the tuning fork combination now. So it's a combination of lung and liver. And we've got the tuning forks. So lung liver, the flower essence is queen of the night. Okay. So once, you know, we're sort of in this 10th chakra. So this is the connection to the higher self, but it's also the connection to past lives, to soul memory, to cellular memory. So it's a fairly big circuit we're sort of in the middle of. And this is about being, let me just double check where we're at with it. Oh, we need to go the whole way. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use some words that may or may not work with you, your belief system. So please, if because oh, the word God is in here, if you just want to say that as higher self or whatever the word is that works for you, but I'm just talking God energy, everything that is empowerment, enlightenment. So it's, uh, we just want to, you know, sort of, it's all good, but we need to do this four times and I need to do three out of four of the different ones. So it's, there, there's some, there's some energy in here. We need to shimmy. I take responsibility for my attitudes and now choose to kindly, gently, lovingly, and supportively transmute my being a victim of the frailty of life and my impotence and inadequacy in the face of God into all-encompassing love. I make the commitment to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively experience the blissful power of deep seeing, understanding, feeling and sensuality. I take responsibility for my attitudes and now choose to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively transform my impotence and inadequacy in the face of God and my distortion or blockage of the female receptive principle into all-encompassing love. I make the commitment to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively experience the blissful power of deep seeing, understanding, feeling and sensuality. I take responsibility for my attitudes and now choose to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively transcend and dissolve my being a victim of the frailty of life, my state of darkness and disassociation brought about by absorbing energies without being rooted, my impotence and inadequacy in the face of God, and my distortion or blockage of the female receptive principle into all-encompassing love. I make the commitment to kindly, gently, lovingly and supportively experience the blissful power of deep seeing, understanding, feeling, and sensuality. Because we had to go through four layers of that, Nicola, I suspect that there were some past lives in relation to um, being a woman where there was something going on around, uh, you know, strength or being suppressed or something, you know, because that was a fairly big one and it was layers and layers and layers of it. So let's go back and see where that 10th chakra is sitting. And hold. Okay, so it's either balanced or in second stage stress. And hold. Okay, so that's brought that back to balance. So it's locking, it's unlocking, and now it's back again. Is there anything else in the chakras we need before moving on? So once again, rechecking. So adrenal survival, deep survival, hidden deep survival, celestial circuit. Okay. Is there anything structurally we need? So we'll start, okay, so now we'll kick in and start doing some of the integration from left to right sides of the brain. So firstly, in relation to the corpus callosum. And hold out. 
I think that's the worst unlock yet. <laughs> so the corpus callosum connects the logical to the creative sides of the brain. There's fear in there. Now, I read one article that was saying that the brain deliberately disconnects the connection between logical and creative hemispheres when we are in survival, which sort of makes sense. I had never thought of it like that. What I had heard is that our corpus callosum that's about a centimetre wide connects our logical to creative hemispheres of the brain. When we have less than 30% of it connecting from left to right sides of the brain, that's when we get panic attacks, that's when we get anxiety. So the more neurons we have connecting from our logical creative through our corpus callosum, the more integrated we feel. Once again, it's fear, threat, danger there and it's pulsing nicely. So the corpus callosum is what helps us to think of things logically and creatively simultaneously. Corpus callosum. And again, hold, beautiful. And one of the main things that shuts that down is trust and trust issues. Trust and trust issues. And I've got a little um, circuit retaining mode on there too, Nicola, of course. And hold out for me and wooshka. And you can of course go into more but I'm trying to get the major pathways working at the moment. So if that kept on unlocking every time I saw someone you know that's when you might actually start delving. You know well who is this? Is it myself? Is it mum? Is it dad? Is it grandparents? Is it a teacher? Is it you know so you just start playing around. But what you end up finding is that when you are pulsing these parts of the brain that's when people's memories come up. So quite often they're ready to chat about a memory that they go, and people nearly always start by saying, I don't know if this has anything to do with it, but, and then they start telling you a story. And you can bet your bottom dollar if it's come up when you're pulsing a particular nuclei in the brain, then it's part of the memory that's been locked in there and hasn't been diffused, dissolved, uh, dealt with. Trust and trust issues. And hold. But the other one that unlocks the corpus callosum, you'll love this one too, David, is appreciation. Appreciation. I mean, luckily, hold out, no one has ever felt unappreciated in life. That never happens. Where's the corpus callosum? It connects the two sides of the, the two hemispheres of the brain. Oh, so you know when you see those pictures of the brain where there's literally a left and a right side, it's the corpus callosum that connects them. Mm -hmm. That's like a boundary or a border. Yeah, it's and it's white muscle mass. It's so and you white. That, you need to have that nice little overlap of the boundaries. So the white muscle mass, it's like um, electrical wiring, you mm -hmm. know. So it's fast fiber. So whereas the uh, the grey matter is where we store memories. So white doesn't store anything. White is just pathways and connections. And that would be myelin sheathing and... Mm. Well, that's glial cells. That's a bit different. Mm. So glial cells, there's about, I don't know, eight, ten types. Once again, that'll be in the signature system somewhere, Nicola. So, yeah, the glial cells are a very specific type of... Actually, they didn't know about glial cells till about 15 years ago. I mentioned it to Jimmy once, and he said, oh, yeah, we've always known about that, but that's a lie because what they used to have in anatomy and physiology books was blank space in the brain. Because every, everyone knows there's lots of blank space in the body. But anyway, so appreciation. And let's just, and because I know that learning is one of our things we're working on, Nicola, let's just ask in relation to trusting to be able to learn, trusting to be able to remember. And hold out, so just, so we'll rebalance your corpus callosum for yourself to trust that you can learn, for yourself to trust that you can remember, and that went into a pain and punishment circuit. So I would suspect your brain doesn't trust that you can do it easily. But that's a great thing about kinesiology, isn't it? You get someone on the table and the more you do it, you're, you know, you're putting it into a different part, part of the memory in your brain. And then it becomes part of your basal ganglia in the unconscious part of the brain. So the basal ganglia is what stores our unconscious patterning. And particularly in the basal ganglia, there's a part called the uh, putterman, which I always joke because, you know, when you can putt really well in golf, stored in the putterman. 
which I think is actually true. But in some of the studies they did with um, kids with autism, they there were 20 kids who just happened to die over a 12 month period where they did, uh, they had autism and they did autopsies on their brains. And they found that in the basal ganglia, particularly the putamen, there was infections like staph and strep. And before then they did not believe that infections could cross the blood brain barrier. And they still don't believe it, of course. But anyway, whatever. So, so in relation to trust that you can learn, trust in your memory. Trust in your ability to be a brilliant kinesiologist. Did I overstep? Did I overstep? Hold. Beautiful. Awesome. <laughs> Just making sure. Okay, so the next little area we're going to do is the anterior commissure. And hold out. Mushka. So this is the neurons coming to the frontal part of the brain. And this is where we problem solve. So once again, this is a white muscle mass coming to the frontal cortex. And once again, it's a pain and punishment circuit. Oh, beautiful. Now the main thing that shuts down the frontal cortex is sadness, despondency, depression. So when we're feeling low, it once again the brain's trying to work out, well, do we want to stay in survival for a little while and keep ourselves safe? Because survival is about safety. Or do we want to move forward into the world and put ourselves at risk? So sadness, despondency, depression. And hold. That was actually pretty good. Let me just ask once again around uh, becoming a brilliant kinesiologist, around being a brilliant kinesiologist. And hold out. Because we can ask any of these pathways around anything. So if you know those little bits and pieces around your clients, you can get more and more specific. Like even the appreciation, that one was added in about 10 years after I learned LEAP. And all of a sudden, one year I went back for an update and they were adding appreciation into the anterior, into the corpus callosum everywhere. But you can imagine, if you know your client, you can really target, target these pathways for them. But these are all pain and punishment. All these little pathways, corpus callosum, anterior commissure, I think they've all been old pain and punishment circuits so far. All from under 10? I haven't asked that. So, CC trust, AC dispensing, amygdala, delay, A. Okay, so we might just uh, do the first two little pathways of the hippocampus and because that's about what we've got time for today. So hippocampus, so the first hippocampal circuit is just connecting the left to right sides of the hippocampus. And what's the hippocampus relation to the corpus callosum? Hold out. Well, there will be nuclei that go from the left to the right hippocampus, but they're quite... Uh, I wonder if they go through the same neural pathways. Because each of these nuclei that has one on the left and one on the right, they've all got their own little neural pathways connecting the left to the right. So hippocampus, of course, being a memory center, the left side of the hippocampus is more about the words and the logic about something, whereas the right side is more about the, the big picture stuff. So for example, you might store fridge on the left side, but you might store everything about the fridge on the right side of the brain, or you might store someone's name on the left, but their face is on the right side of the hippocampus. So as soon as you see someone walking up the street, if your brain has got stress, 
then the stress cut starts kicking in. You go, I know that person, I know that person, I know that person. You cannot remember, you know, their name until the stress goes down after they leave and you've called them love and sweetie and bud and all sorts of other things. And then they go and you go, damn, it was Tamara. Because the stress is gone. So it's deliberately shut down your ability to look sensible in public, which is really useful. So hippocampus, left and right sides of the brain. So firstly, we've got, just got to get those connections and hold out. But the two main things that shut it down are fear of failure and hold out. Yep. Pain and punishment circuit again. Okay, so in relation to fear of failure and hold and fear of success. And hold out. So when the brain's between a rock and a hard place and both of them, you know, so fear of success here in Australia, of course, there's a whole tall poppy syndrome. So normal everyday average Joes who make it, you know, there's a bit of a pull, tall poppy syndrome that can happen where <laughs> chop them off at the head. Obviously the way the um, elite doofuses have been around the last couple of years, you wouldn't want to be famous and rich if, you're <laughs> if your life depended on it these days. <laughs> oh dear, groan, groan, groan. So yeah, so fear of failure and fear of success showed up. Which means, and once again, that can be like if you're doing really well in school, what can happen? So you get uh, picked on by the other kids in the class. You can get asked by the teacher to do extra stuff. It can be just boring. So, you know, it's sort of like even the whole success thing. What do you have to do? It's like, yep, you, you know, walk over your mother's grave to, you know, make a million bucks sort of thing. It's, it's, there's some real negative connotations with it in our society. Ah, fear of failure, that one's pretty obvious. So let's check fear of success again. And hold, beautiful. Okay. Okay, so is there anything I need to close up this circuit and solidify it? Yep, there's something. So what do I need? Yeah, right, so for a start, we just need good old emotional stress release points. So bring that uh, blood supply to the frontal cortex. This is a new program for this body now and in the future. The old program for this body is no longer necessary now in the future. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs> it's quoting Carl Ferrari, 25 years ago. Okay, Okay. once again, is there anything else we need to help uh, solidify this energy for Nicola? Beautiful. Okay, is there anything specifically diet-wise, food-wise? So is it the usuals? Do, like, actually, do we need to do any fasting? No. Do we need to do any dry fasting? No. Do we need to increase water? Yes, we do. So just staying nice and hydrated? Yep. Uh, good fats? Yep. So good electrical energy? So good fats, lots of water? Um, is there anything we need to decrease? So what about, um, say, refined carbohydrates, sugars, all the usual sort of stuff? Okay, so, so yeah, so just sensible, good, good hydration, lots of good fats, cut down on the sugar. At, what day are we today? Tuesday. Okay, so it's not your weekend yet. So you're cutting down on some carbohydrates and some sugars the next couple of days to allow it to integrate a bit better. Because generally it takes about three days for scans to show different after leak processes. Beautiful. Excellent. Thanks, Nicola. I'd better make David back to himself again. Okay, so I am now 100% David.
I did the five day. <laughs> you don't want to just do that. <laughs> I'm now 100% David. And hold, hold out. Together, together, together. No, relax, relax, relax. Together and hold. Beautiful. Good stuff. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Nicola. I have this to you as soon as I can. And I see you on Monday.